In my embedded systems and IoT courses, I use those little dev kit boards so that students can get the theory applied to real hardware. And the framework that we use to develop our code is usual, usually Visual Studio Code. <laughs> There are so many videos about how to install Visual Studio Code, we're not going to get into that. What we are going to be doing is putting together an extension today in order to, well, download to these ESP32 uh, Node MCU evaluation boards. So we're going to fire up Visual Studio Code right now, and if you'll see in this lower corner right down here, you'll see there's the Extensions Manager. Now we're going to go up to the search box here, and we're going to type ESP-IDF. Now that is going to bring us to the expressive IDF different extensions and there are a couple of them but the one that we're going to use primarily because we're really interested in the low level stuff in those in, in not having you know too much abstraction away from the hardware we're going to stick with the extension that's provided to us by expressive um, clicking on install will quickly install install the extension now you can see that the install is really quick, but it's the configuration that's going to take us some time. We're going to do this by going to the command palette, and there's three ways to get to the command palette. You can go click on view and then select command palette. You can also hit F1 or you can type control shift P. All of those will bring up this menu of all the different commands that we can do. We are going to type in configure ESP. And in doing so, it brings up this window that allows us to do expressed or advanced. We're going to select express. The download server, GitHub is fine. The other option is the expressive servers. Just go ahead and leave it to GitHub. Then we are going to select the IDF version that we want, the ESP IDF version. The latest release uh, 5.0 at the time of this recording seems to be pretty stable. Now, one of the things that our, my students seem to have a problem with whenever we are installing this stuff in the lab, in the laboratory, we do not have administrative privileges on those machines. And because we don't have administrative privileges, we need to be able to install this to specifically the tools and the tools directory and the container directory we need to be able to install those two folders that we have write privileges to so if you find that you're having problems installing this if it's not going through with the install it's usually not going to be very specific as to what the problem was check out and make sure that you have write privileges to each one of the folders you're trying to install to so we're going to go ahead and just to make it so that this is um, you know definitely going to work for us we're going to go ahead and select both the ESP IDF container directory and the tools directory to be just in my users folder, giving them proper subdirectories. Uh, and when we go ahead and click on install, it's going to take a while. Now I'm going to press the turbo button here so that we get done really, really quick. There, through the magic of turbo buttons, which there isn't one on this one, on this machine, we've got it complete, uh, complete installation performed. Now, in order to test to see if we've got a properly working install, I'm going to go ahead and go to the command palette and type ESP example. And by typing ESP example, I can come up with the different examples that are provided to us by the ESP IDF uh, extension. Let's just go ahead and select Hello World, a good place to start. Most of our projects that we're going to see from here on out are actually going to be from Sample Project because Sample Project, it's just going to put together the files that we need with very little structure to our source code. Hello World here, however, is going to give us a full, uh, you know, operating uh, code. We're going to take a look at the different pieces as soon as we move forward. So we're going to create a project using the example Hello World. Now, once it creates our project, now all we need to go do is go up to this main folder, click on main to drop it to drop down the contents of that folder, and select hello world main.c. This is in C. Now, this code, if, for those of you who are not familiar with C, don't worry about it. If you've got experience with many programming languages, including Java, uh, PHP, JavaScript, I mean, a number of different programming languages, they all have that same general structure that was actually derived from C. But let's take a look and see exactly what this code has provided us. 
Now in C, if you've got a hashtag at the beginning of a line, that represents something called a compiler directive, where we're asking the compiler to do something. Whenever we're looking at these includes at the top, that's just an opportunity for us to bring in these things called header files. Anything with a dot H is called a header file. And those header files define or allow us to access components of libraries, allow us to uh, access predefined macros, that sort of thing. But those, those files are gonna give us access to the library functions that we're gonna be using in this hello world file. Let's talk about that top one, the stdio.com. H. That one's going to give us access to standard input and output functionality. So we're going to output hello world. How are we going to do it? We're going to call one of the functions from stdio.h that are represented by stdio.h. A little bit further down, you can see those two files that are contained in subfolders called free RTOS, free real-time operating system. Writing a whole operating system is, well, daunting. Uh, one person might be able to do it in the span of a few months, 20,000 lines of code or something, but let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's use some operating system components by calling those library functions and having a real-time operating system loaded onto our embedded system. And then below that, we've got the ESP chip info and the ESP flash. In this hello world code that we're going to be running, we're also going to be displaying some information about the chip, uh, things like flash size and, and uh, CPU version and so forth, just, just to give a little bit more, in, make this code a little bit more interesting. A little bit further down, we've got the code. Now, in, 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 most, in most embedded systems, we have this function that we're going to jump into and we're going to stay in. In this case, we've got app main. App main contains a couple of things. For example, at the top right here, we have the hello world statement. That is being performed with a printf. The printf standard old school C programming allowing us to output to the standard out, standard I.O. device. Then a little bit later we're defining some components that are going to allow us to access the information from the chip and we're going to actually call some routines in order to populate those structures with the information that we're looking for. After that we have a printf statement. We're going to print all the material or the, the information that we have retrieved. From the chip info, we are going to grab the revision number, and that'll be the major revision number and the minor revision number, just more stuff to output. And then later on, we print that out again. And then after that, we grab the flash size and print that out, along with some other characteristics of the processor. And we've got this for loop, and we're gonna loop 10 times. I is going to decrement from 10 down to zero. And all that's going to do inside of that loop is we're simply going to say we're going to restart in however many seconds, delay a second, go through the loop, delay a second, go through the loop, and just do a countdown. And as soon as we get through that countdown, we're going to go ahead and restart it. Those F flushes that are underneath the prints, what we've got is a buffer that contains all of the inf all the text that we have printed, but that's going to just stay inside of our evaluation board until we flush that buffer out. And so those F flushes make it so that, okay, we've got all this text that we've been building up inside of the evaluation board. It's still in the evaluation board. It doesn't get sent out the serial port until we hit that F flush function. And then we go ahead and perform a, a restart, which is going to go back up and start the main loop all over again. So let's go ahead and compile this. And all you have to do is click on that little can-shaped icon at the bottom. That'll go ahead and perform a compile for us. Actually, clicking on the flame down there, that will make it so that we'll do a compile, a download, and an execution of the code running in a terminal. But I like to do this step-by-step step so that I can make sure that each step completes com uh, successfully. So as we compile, and this is going to have to speed this up again, too. Now, once our binary file has been created and you can see the size and all the details for that uh, binary file, now we need to flash it to our ESP evaluation board. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do. First of all, we need to do down in the lower left-hand corner here, we need to make sure that we select the correct COM port. Remember, you just simply need to go to Device Manager, look at Device Manager, figure out exactly what that, uh, that USB to... Uh, COM port bridge has been assigned to, what COM port it's been assigned to. 
So all you need to do is click on that COM port in the bottom left-hand corner of the Visual Studio screen and select the COM port. In our case, it was COM4. Now we can uh, go ahead and click on the lightning bolt to download to our ESP evaluation board. Now remember, all these evaluation boards have a different way to get put into programming mode where you can download code to their double EEPROM. In the case of the ESP evaluation board, you hold down the boot button, press enable real quick, let go of it, and then let go of the boot button. That should put it in download mode or programming mode. Once you've done that, you should be able to click on the lightning bolt. And if you click on the lightning bolt, go up to the top of the screen and you can see we get a bunch of options including the JTAG, UART, and DFU. Select UART, that's the one that we're gonna to wanna to go with. And it should automatically do the download and programming. Now, once we've finished programming, we go to a terminal because we wanna see what it looks like on the output side, what's coming out of that serial port. So we've got our hello world, our characteristics of the CPU that we were looking for, then restarting in 10, 9, 8, and so forth. Restarts gives us our hello world and the characteristics we were looking for in the CPU. So this little demonstration, I hope, gave you an opportunity to see how to install the expressive ESP IDF extensions, where once again, we're not going to grab any of the ones which give us a little bit higher level of extra abstraction, which would make things easier on us. We actually want to get a little bit deeper, dig a little bit deeper in the code, but also an opportunity to see how we're going to code, how we're going to compile, how we're going to flash our code, and how we're going to actually uh, see it on the terminal.